I would like to greet you all wonderful people in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity that he has given us again today, that we may come together to worship him, that we may come together to fellowship and also lift up the name of the Lord and at the same time experience the preaching and the teaching of the word of God. I want to appreciate you specifically for taking your time to tune in today as well and watch uh, this service even uh, today, this Sunday morning. And I want to believe that there is a way that the Lord would want to speak even unto you. As we begin, I want to invite you to, as we continue watching, we just be throwing in your comments and um, telling us where you are. Um, I'm responding to the message. We would love to see and hear the feedback that is coming from you to show us that indeed someone is listening and someone is watching and someone is hearing something from what is being shared from here. Glory be unto the Almighty God. We want to get to the Word of God for today and we are going to get our Bibles and read the Bible from the book of Romans chapter 6 and we'll read verse 4 and we'll pick as well Romans chapter 7 and we'll read verse 6. Romans chapter 6, and we'll read in verse 4. The Bible says in verse 4, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even we, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And we read, verse 6 of chapter 7. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us take some time to pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today, O oh God Almighty, for your goodness, for your grace and your mercy in our lives. We want to thank you, Lord God Almighty, for you are such a good God. You are such a great and awesome God. We love you, Master. We give you praise. We give you glory. Even pray for this opportunity that we have today, this morning, that, my God, we may hear you speak in our lives, that we may hear you, O oh God Almighty, minister in our hearts. I pray for every individual that will take their time to listen to this word. Oh God Almighty, I pray that my Father, it will mean something in their lives. It will transform them. Oh God, transform their minds. Oh God Almighty, renew their minds. Oh God, even as they hear the word of God, because your word, I believe, my Father, is called power to transform the lives of every hearer. For the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. And this is that time where we get to hear your word. May our faith begin to grow, O oh God Almighty, and we begin to walk in newness of life because of the word that has been spoken in our lives in Jesus' name. After all has been said and done, let all the glory be unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Um, we want to continue from where we left in the previous week. If you managed to tune in and watch the service, we were talking about the newness of life, about walking in newness of life, walking in newness of life. And in this week, again, we are going to continue to, con to talk about walking in newness of life. And I want to build up from where we left in the previous week. And for me to be able to do so, I would want to uh, give a little bit of a recap for someone probably who might have not been able to connect with us in the previous week. We spoke in the previous week where we explored chapter 6 of the book of Romans and chapter 7 as well and we picked a few scriptures from there where we saw the Bible talking to us about us being, uh, with us being able to, to walk in newness of life and the scripture is showing us that we have got to die to sin. If we have died to sin, then we can be able to rise together with Christ and walk in the newness of life. And one of the key Ill elements in walking in newness of life is knowing who God says you are. Today I want to focus a little bit more on making us realize what 
Christ has done even for you and for me and embracing the new identity that has come to you, the new identity that you and I have in Christ and we begin to walk like those who understand and walk like those who know who God has made them to be. If you're going to be able to effectively walk in the newness of life, you have got to know, to know who this new person is altogether. Because we understood from the previous message last week that when you are walking in the newness of life, you have been made a new creature. You have now become a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So for that reason, when all things have become new, what kind of a person are you? What kind of a creature is this creature? What kind of a creature has God made this creature to be when, so that this creature can be able to effectively walk in newness of life? And so embracing the new identity in Christ is going to come handy in you being able to effectively walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. And as I begin, I want us to understand something. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, and if you read in verse 8 into verse 9, the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is God speaking. And God says that his ways are not our ways. Neither are his thoughts our thoughts. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are our, his ways higher than our ways and his thoughts than our thoughts. So in other words, there is a way that God operates in. There is a way that God desires of you and me to move in. As we saw last week from chapter 7 of the book of Romans chapter 6, chapter 7, and we saw that the Bible says there is a new way of the spirit and there is a new way that you and I have got to walk in. And that new way we are seeing today, the Bible saying that the way of the Lord is higher than the ways of men. And so if we are going to be able to effectively walk in newness of life, we have got to appreciate the way of God. We have got to appreciate how God operates and how God does his things. God does not do things the way the world does their things. There is a way in which the world does whatever he does and there is a way that God does what he does. There is a way that God thinks about human beings and there is a way that the world thinks about you and I. When the world looks at you, the world defines you by what you have done. The world says you are this because of what you have done first. You have got to deserve to be what the world says you are. You can never become what the world says you are unless and until there is something that you have done in advance for you to deserve to be called whoever the world can call you to be. I hope you are hearing what I'm trying to say here. So it is the way of the world. It is how the world operates. You have got to have done something. There has got to be, it's, you are more like being rewarded for something you have done. There is an effort that you have put even to become what the world says you are. But when it comes to God, whom the Bible says, his ways are not our ways. Neither his thoughts are our thoughts. Even when it comes to God, God says you are this. When he has said you are that, it is not because you deserved for him to say you are that. It is because it is God who has said it. And when God has said it, has said it rather, that circles it. When God has said whatever he says about you, that circles it. And so when you're going to walk in the newness of life, you have got to embrace what God is saying about you. You have got to embrace who God says you are for you to be able to walk in the newness of life. And so when we read the Bible in the book of Romans chapter 5, I want us to go there to Romans chapter 5 and we read in the book of, of Romans chapter 5 and we read in verse 19. The Bible says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Take hold of that. Get hold of that. Hold on unto that. And let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we see 
as well what the Bible says. Now he's talking about who God is saying you are. Who God is saying you are. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and in verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. We have been made the righteousness of God. You have been made the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God. That is what the Bible says about you who is, who is born again, you who has died to sin, you who has been separated from sin and now is married to Christ, as we saw from Romans chapter 6. You are, the Bible says, you have been made the righteousness of God. It is critical for you to understand if you're going to effectively and boldly walk in the newness of life and walk confidently in this new, di- new, new, new identity that God has made you to understand that you have been made the righteousness of God. The Bible says, by the disobedience of one, many were made sinners, which means you and I, at some point, you were a sinner. And because of the disobedience of one man referring to Adam, you became a sinner. You were born defined. You were born known to be a sinner. But because of the goodness of God, because of the grace of God, because of the love of God, you have been made righteous. You did not make yourself righteous, but there had to be somebody who had to become sin whom who, who knew no sin had to become sin so that you can be made the righteousness of God I want to emphasize this point by saying to you understand that you did not do anything for you to deserve to be made the righteousness of God today God when he looks at you he sees someone who is righteous there was no effort from you that made you to be who God made you to be. So when you walk in newness of life, you are walking in appreciation of who God has made you to be. While if you walk boldly and you lift up your shoulders, you are walking confidently. At the same time, you are acknowledging the fact that there is someone who had to become seen so that there could be someone who will become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the system of the world says, work to become someone. The system of God says, he worked for you to become someone. The world says, work, do something so you can become someone. But God says, someone did something for you to become someone. Today you have been made the righteousness of God because there is someone who had to do something on your behalf. You didn't deserve to be saved. You didn't deserve to be called the righteousness of God. Do you understand what it means to be said the righteousness of God? It means there is no sin when it comes to you. You are pure and clean. That is what God says says about you not because you have done something because there couldn't be anything that you could have done for you to be said you are the righteousness of God there couldn't be any effort sufficient to make you to be who God have said you to be so rise up child of God and walk in the newness of life walk in this newness walk in this fresh start Walk in this fresh quality of life because somebody had to become something for you to be made someone. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. So you, you have been made. You are the righteousness of God. Not because you did something or there is something righteous that made you to deserve it. But the righteous one of God became sin so you can be made the righteousness of God. I hope you're hearing what I'm trying to put across to you today. Because you know what? People tend to, to, to tell us, they, they, they feed our minds so much with us having to do something to work for our salvation. The law actually says you have got to work and then when you have done some work, then you can deserve to be given this title. You can deserve then to be given who whom you you can be given whatever title can be put on you the the, 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 the law says you have got to do something there's got to be an effort coming from you for you to be made who God says you are 
But then grace, oh glory to God, grace has made me be the righteousness of God. I didn't deserve it. I couldn't have got it anywhere. I could have tried with my money. I could have tried with whatever I could have had. But then it couldn't be enough. It couldn't become sufficient to make me to be the righteousness of God. So I challenge you today that because of the sacrifice of one man who had to die on the cross, whom the Bible says when you die together with him, when you rise up together with him and made alive, you walk in newness of life. Today you deserve to walk in newness of life because somebody had to make you to deserve. Because on your own, there couldn't be any certificate sufficient. There couldn't be any money sufficient. There couldn't be even any bribe sufficient to make you to be who God has made you to be. You are the righteousness of God because God has made you to be. You remember in the Old Testament, there were sacrifices that were being made. Sacrifices of bulls and goats and lambs. Those were insufficient to make men to be holy. Those were insufficient to make men to be a new creature and walk in newness of life. But they had to be somebody. They had to be the lamp of God that had to be slain on the cross for someone like you to be the new, to be the righteousness of God and effectively walk in the newness of life. Because there are some people today who might want to claim, you know, we have lived so well, we deserve it, we have done so well in our lives. Everybody knows us in the community, they know us. In, the, in our workplace, they know us to be so good and so probably we deserve to be made the righteousness of God. But tell you what, your righteousness, the Bible says in Isaiah 64, verse 6 says, but we are all as, as an unclean thing. Your own righteousness, your own goodness before God is as an unclean thing. That's how God puts it across. He says, but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind has taken us away. So nobody can claim to deserve to be made the righteousness of God. We have been made the righteousness of God. Glory to God. You are righteous, not because you did anything. You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans, we have been justified by faith. We have been made the righteousness of God because somebody died. And by so doing, we have been justified. We have been made as if there was no sin in our lives. While it were so much sinners, the Bible says the love of God is shared in our hearts even by the Holy Spirit. And it further says, while it were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we didn't even seek for the Lord, while we didn't even look for him, Christ died for you. So you do not deserve what you now got. Therefore, walk in newness of life. Walk in courage, knowing that whatever God has made me to be, I didn't deserve it, but he made me to be it. Glory to God. Somebody say, he made me to be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the other thing that I want us to put, understand today as we talk about walking in newness of life is that God, he says in his word, in the book of First Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, we are hearing what God, who God has made us to be. When we are walking in newness of life, it is because we understand who God has made us to be. And hear what the Bible says. Before I go there, Last week we read from Romans chapter 7. And when we read then we heard about the fact that when a woman is married to his to her husband, she is bound by the law of her husband. Until the husband dies, then she is freed from the law of her husband. So we understood the fact that when you are, when you are now married to Christ, you, are, you, you, you belong to him. You are his own. You cannot commit adultery anymore. You can't continue committing adultery anymore because you, have been, you, you, you are now joined together with him. You have been made, you, you, the, 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 married to Christ and now you belong to him. In First Peter chapter, chapter 2, the Bible says, the Bible says, but you are a chosen people. 
Let's read it. First Peter chapter 2. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that, may, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The other version, the, the, the King James Version says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I love that one. A peculiar people. I want you to listen to this. What is being said when it's referring to you being a peculiar people. Four things are being said here. They're saying you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. And for today, I want just to expound a little bit on a peculiar people. What it means to us when the Bible is talking about us being a peculiar people. I read this somewhere and it says in the, in the British, you know, in a, a, a parish or a church exempt from the due restriction of the diocese in which it lies and subject to the direct due restriction of the monarch or archbishop. When a people are called to be a peculiar people, these are, these are the kind of people that are being talked about. These are the kind of people that are amongst all these people. There is, there is the archbishop and there are many people who report to the archbishop indirectly through other platforms. But then these peculiar people are a group of people, a specific group of people that have been set apart to report directly to the archbishop. Oh, glory to God. When you are a peculiar people, you now have got access, the privilege, the right to access God directly. You are that kind of a people who now have got access to God. When the Bible says walk in newness of life, it is because you have got access to God. You have got the right to God. Now you can approach the throne of grace with confidence that you may receive grace and mercy in the time of need. Why? Because somebody did something for someone to become somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now you can be able to do something. You can be able to be made someone. Now you actually have been made someone who is a peculiar person, a someone who, who has got an access to God, a direct access to God without having to go via anybody. So glory to God today when we walk in the newness of life, we walk with understanding and appreciation and embracing the new identity that says you are a royal priesthood, you are a holy nation, you are a chosen generation amongst all the generations. You, I mean you who's watching me right now, you who's listening to me right now, not your neighbor, but you that I'm speaking to, you are chosen by God. You have been set apart by God. And God has given you full access unto him. Oh, glory to God. So when you rise and when you walk in the newness of life, when you have come back to God, when you have returned to the Lord, he makes you to be his own. The Bible says that you belong to God. A people belonging to God. Because now you are married to Christ. You now belong to God. So when you walk in newness of life, you are walking together with the one whom you belong to. Wherever you are, when you are walking in the newness of life, you are not walking alone because you belong to someone. And this someone is God who is always there, who promised in his word, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be with you. He will hold you with his right hand of righteousness. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. The Bible says, you have been made righteous. The Bible says you are a chosen generation. And therefore, as I bring it to a conclusion, having have said so, what then am, are you supposed to do? What then is expected on you? The Bible says in the, in the book of First Peter chapter 2 and the second part, it says that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have been made righteous. You are a peculiar people. Why has God made you to be that? So you can walk in the light. Walking in the newness of light is about walking in the light. 
Walking in the newness of life is about showing the world who God is. Walking in the light is showing the world who God is. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 16 verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the peoples. I want you to understand something about light. That light dominates darkness. Wherever there is darkness, when light shows up in that place, darkness can't stand the light. Walking in the newness of life is about walking in the light. Walking in the light is dominating in this world. You are being called back to God so you can rise and dominate. You are being drawn back to God so you may be light in the dark. Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 8 it says, For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. There was a point in time when you were darkness. But now because something has happened, someone has done something for you to become someone, therefore you have got to walk as children of light. The Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 1, in verse 5 to verse 7, it says, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet we walk in the darkness, we lie, we do not live by the faith. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Child of God, here is the message today. You are being called back to God so you can walk in the newness of life. You're walking in the light because God has made you. He has capacitated you. He has put enough in you to manifest on the outside in this world. And the world may see the light and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Allow us to pray. Father, we want to thank you for your words even today. Thank you for speaking even in our lives that we may realize who you have made us to be so we may begin to do what you have qualified us to do. Because you have made us righteous, you have made us a peculiar people, you expect of us now to confidently walk in newness of life. I pray that my God, every child of God today that has given their lives to you, will begin to rise and walk boldly. Rise and begin to do that which God has ordained and qualified them to be. In the name of Jesus. Father, I even pray for somebody today. Probably they have given up. Probably they have gone back and they've failed and they've been told and reminded of all manner of sin that they used to do. I pray that my God today there will be a renewal of understanding that when you are in Christ, you are a new creature. And the old has passed away and all things have become new and there is no condemnation. Therefore, we rise and do as according to what he has said. In Jesus' name, after all has been said and done, Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you. May God do you well. Hope to have you again next time. Amen. Thank you.